we are, sports fans. We're finally here. F1 2012. We're playing it today, and I cannot wait. The memories of this game are going to be absolutely joyous. F1 2012 was my very first proper F1 game that I started uploading YouTube videos on consistently. You know, I did a few videos on F1 2011 with a potato camera pointed at a TV. <laughs> We're not going to talk about those days. But 2012 was the, the proper first game where I had an Elgato capture card back in the day and I started posting weekly videos so I have a lot of good memories from this game you know it was the first of many the first the first original road to glory series I did was on F1 2012 my very first online league races was on F1 2012 very first proper career mode series was on F1 2012 F1 2012 is really the starter the kickstarter of my channel back in the day and so I have a lot of love for it in my heart and I'm sure a lot of you guys are because a lot of you in the comments below the last one we played F1 2011, could not wait for me to boot up F1 2012 for a lot of you guys as well. It may have been your first proper F1 game you played uh, consistently for a while. And here we are then. We've now got a brand new looking menu for F1 2012. They did away with the paddock kind of esque vibes from the previous two games. And we've now got this uh, wind tunnel with the beautiful looking McLaren from the 2012 season. Probably one of the best looking McLarens I've actually made in the, in the recent times, to be honest. Apart from, for me, my personal favourite was the 2011 car because I just love the look of the side. Boards, but this was also a gorgeous looking car in the era, remember, where they um, had those awful step noses and McLaren, well at least at the start of this season, did not have it and so in the game it was never modelled, it stayed the same way as it was the entire time as it was at Australia, so it looked awesome the entire time in game as well. And hallelujah, Codemasters finally realised that Windows for PC is an utter turd and we don't have to actually use it this time. Right, as usual, player name, player one. Yeah, let's just go for it. Yeah, Europe. And then here we go. The Young Drivers Test. I completely forgot. I actually forgot this was a thing. Young Driver Test. This was this was cool back in the day. I was very hyped. I remember when the game came out. Of course, this actually gives us an insight into what will 2019 be like. Because 2019 will also have you choosing from a driver academy. Because you will be starting an F2 and choosing a driver academy to be promoted into eventually. In this game, it was a Young Driver's Test. Where you just got to step into one of these cars to get yourself basically, you know, tutorialed up. Basically, It was basically a, a, a way to shroud a tutorial for the F1 games. Um, so since I, I compliment to the McLaren, let's just go in the McLaren then and uh, see what's what. I am very excited for this. I it's it's been a long while, long while. I don't even remember how the Young Drivers Test went to be honest. So let's see how this goes. Day one, Yas Marina Abu Dhabi. Oh, love it. Welcome to the fabulous Yas Marina circuit here in Abu Dhabi. The location for this year's Young Driver Test. And right on cue, the first engine of the day has fired into life right below my commentary box. So I think we'll soon see a car out on track. Indeed we will. Let's go. Oh, look at this. Look at this cutscene. I love this cutscene. It was such a glamorous cutscene at the time. Hey, good to see you again. Our new race engineer for 2012, and he is the most vanilla man I've ever seen or heard in my life. Um, yeah, they really just, they started off really brilliantly in 2010, I think, with a flamboyant engineer, and they just got a little bit blander as they went on through the years. They've gotten better, because it kind of went back to kind of a bit more enthusiasm with Jeff, currently, where we've had for the last three F1 games, but uh, it definitely took a step back in the kind of fun department with the engineer voice. As your race engineer, it's my job to support you this weekend. When you're out on track, we'll remain in contact via radio. I'll feed you information as and when you need it. We'll attach comms when you're in the car. Okay, let's get you strapped in. Let's go, boy. Let's get strapped in. Look at it. Look at that shiny beast. Looks epic. And then we go into the usual cutscene of stepping into the car. Here we go. Right, young driver test select. We've got a whole program to go through here, so let's go for it. Straight line test. Unfortunately, we have to do every single one of these to actually make it through. I think there's at some point we can leave, but I think it was if you did all of them, you got to select more teams from the options okay. in the in the career mode. All right, let's go. Have to get through all these noob tests. Oh, nailed it. I stopped in a straight line. Can you believe it? Sign me up. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Right, Racing 101. Let's hit it. Modern Formula One cars have around 750 brake horsepower being sent to the rear wheels. 2,000 years later. At which point you can use full power. 
And that was it. I literally, I watched a video and I passed the test. <laughs> How about that? At the time, this may have been absolutely awesome and cutting edge. But now looking back at it, it's it's very much the most piss take tutorial ever. And you had to sit through it. You can see on the bottom there, all the teams are greyed out because I'm, I'm not unlocked any of them. I need to still do more tests like these and sit through more videos probably. So let's go hairpin turn test. <laughs> can I turn through a hairpin? Yes or no? Let's do this. I can't lie, Chief. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, mate. I don't think I can do this. This is too much work. Right, here we go. Right, I've got to go through this entry point. Slow the thing down. Go through the apex. Exit. And then get up to speed. Oh, what? Okay. I forgot they put in a fake puncher. Just get me ready for inevitably when I screen freeze and get a puncher that way. Yeah, nice one. I'll pass the test, lads. Can I can I drive a Formula 1 car now properly? Please? Please? Oh, come on. Baseline performance. Just come on. Let me in a car. Let me in a car properly. Let me in. Let me in. All right, I've got to faff through going to some corners now. Hit that apex. Hit that apex. Ruin that one. Right, where are we going next? Another apex hit. Nice and easy. Make sure we hit that. I'm in neutral. That's not good. Was that it? I had to go through three apexes and I made it through the test. Oh, gold medal. Get in there. That's the greatest achievement I've ever had in my life. Right, we finally unlocked some teams. Let's get going to the proper career. Enough of these faffing around with these tests. I'm done with these. No, I've got to watch a video about Kurz and DRS. I already know this. And that's the end of day one of the Young Drivers Test here at Abu Dhabi. Join us tomorrow for day two. No, I'm all right, Crofty. I'm going to head into an actual F1 car now, thanks. We've got, uh, well, here's the new menu. It was, uh, to, to be fair, a little bit more bland than 2011 and 2010, to be honest. They took a bit of a different, interesting route with this one. But career, let's jump into it, shall we? Because that's what we're all here for. F1 2012 career mode. Career, let's go for it. Right, we're going to choose Marussia because, as I said, this was the first game I did my original F1 Road to Glory in. So I think it's only fair I go in the Marussia car for this one. Right, the career hub at this stage has changed very much so. Um, uh, and this game in 2012 was the first time they properly had, um, like, actual... Not R&D, but tiering systems. So I remember back in the day, basically, if you beat in a Marussia car, if you just came top of the bottom three teams, Caterham, HRT, and Marussia, you would move on to the second tier, which was the midfield. If you beat that, you moved on to the top tier. So essentially, if you came in like, uh, in the constructors wise, actually, not the uh, drivers. So if you came in, what was it? If you came in fourth, you would move up into the top tier of performance of your car. If you came lowest of the midfield, you moved to the bottom tier. So it was the first time in the F1 games where they had proper kind of tiering and some sort of subtle moving about of team uh, performances, uh, if you will. We've got emails just like in F1 2011, but there are no actual interviews anymore. That was uh, This is when the interviews kind of stopped in the F1 games for a long while, from 2012 all the way till, well, 2018, wasn't it? Yeah, 20, literally, uh, interviews only came back in F1 2018, so they were gone for a good six years then from the F1 game franchise. It was uh, just not part of it. Um, got emails for obviously, you know, all the RAND data. Sabine Walker welcomes us to Formula 1. This is our, our agent, I'm guessing. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope you feel super looked after by our hospitality team. To clarify my role this season, I'll be both your full-time agent and PA. But you never see Sabine. You never see her face. You, you know, you can't get any death stares from any random PR women uh, for a long while in the F1 games. And Dean Knight is our engineer and the man we go to to talk about everything. But, yeah, the only thing you got about the outside world of Formula 1 was these news clippings. But they were pretty, I mean, useless, to be honest. I mean, Formula 1 welcomes rookie player 1. <laughs> and uh, Marussia sign player 1. That's a, that's a ton and a half. And can anyone match Sebastian Vettel? Well, of course, 2012 was an epic season in real life. So it did mean the game was also quite interesting in terms of the way people, uh, what, what the results were in terms of the career mode and the AI and whatnot like that. But let's head out then, main hub, and let's get going here for the Australian Grand Prix. Here we are, lads. Here we are, back in the office, back in the Marussia office. This is a throwback and after Road to Glory, the original from 2012. Like right now, I'm used to seeing all whites in the Williams Road to Glory I'm doing right now for the 2019 season. But this brings back 
some, well, I would say good memories, but they're all bad. <laughs> Apart from maybe the, the moment we're actually, right, we're actually good at the end of the series, but a lot of it was painful memories of being in this team. But, uh, you know, we're always going to have a soft spot for this team. All right, let's just go out on track. Let's see how this thing handles, first of all, shall we? Let's just drive out. That's all right, mate. You're going to take it nice and calm. Let's see the difference. The handling difference is going to be quite, quite big to 2011. 2011 was lock to lock. 2012... I, they, they had pretty okay handling. It, looking back on it, it was very understeer, especially on a wheel. The handling was very understeer on a wheel, but uh, it was pretty okay. They improved a lot from 2011, but oh, dit. Well, I've spun it straight away. Some things never change, huh? Old F1 games, I just seem to not be able to not spin the car. Right, here we are, back in the Marusha. This feels very odd, but like the HRT, you can see on the bottom right there, no curves, just DRS to contend with in these practice sessions in quali. Let's see how it is for turn one. Remember, you could really downshift very rapidly in 2012, but uh, there's the understeer kicking. You had to turn in very early. This feels so slow to 2018 cars now and what I've, I've been used to. Like, go back to the F1 2018 game. That will feel rapid. Like, this just feels so slow under braking and turning. Like, no downforce on the front. No down... I mean, I know this car especially is like a literal, you know, plank of wood in the front wing. But still, even the McLaren and Red Bull wouldn't feel that great. Uh, I mean, with these era of cars. you got to remember, they took away the... the oh, ha, ha, ja, damn it. All right, that's a, that's, that's a nice drift. Uh, they took away the blown diffuser, of course, for this year. Oh, it's Maldonado again. Mate, come back. We've seen you twice now on the Retro F1 games. Come back. Come back. Come on. We need to get an autograph once again. This time I won't ask you to do it on my helmet. Pastor, come on. This is your winning season. This is the season where you won a Grand Prix. I need to need to get alongside you, mate. Here we go. Close up. Look, we're in, in the midst of a legend here, lads. Look at it. Watch the legend go. The wily old fox, Maldonado, in his natural habitat. Little did he know he'd be on to win a Grand Prix this season. The man. The myth. The legend. But uh, I think that's enough practice for me, to be honest. I think we're ready for qualifying, don't you? Don't mind me just spinning around the car as you... Oh. Pfft. Sorry, Hulkenberg. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Taking you out. Uh, I'll buff out, I'm sure, mate. Oh, there's been a crash. Oh, <laughs> Garth Gaines crashed into Maldonado. The Cucumber and Maldonado collide on my qualifying lap. They both ruined my laps, but that's uh, quite ironic. You know, we, we we were the Cucumber. We replaced the Cucumber last time round, and now we've just seen him crash into Maldonado. Kind of, it's, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? He just attracts attention like that. All right, let's go, lads. Race time. It's time for the uber dramatic intro. Hamilton on pole and a McLaren. That's a throwback. Here we are. The lovely black and red Marussia. Teammate towards the back. That's going to be hard, Chief. Maldonado's right ahead of us, to be honest. But here we go to five red lights for our first race in the F1 2012 career. Mode. We're underway to be in a very slow start. There's Jorik Vern in the Toro Rosso. Technically, my boss from Veloce Esports <laughs> into turn one. He's had a bit of a mare with Maldonado. The AI ooh, getting a little bit dicey there. We go around the outside of Perez, though. It's been a pretty okay start so far. Massa's had a very slow one. Can we, I remember they, they used to, you could make a horrendous dive down the inside here on 2012, I think. Yeah, here we go. Big, big dive down into... <laughs> I've just... Oh, no! I went reverse gear. I've been an absolute numpty. Sorry. Sorry. Look, I'm just going to have to block everyone. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I went down too many... I rapid shifted down too much. Went to reverse gear. I was about to say we've just overtaken about 900 cars there. We're going to overtake Rosberg because I think he's got an issue. Yeah, he's got a front... I, I literally just caused devastation there. We're up into P11, though. So it's worked out, hasn't it? Now, I know what you're going to be saying at this point. What on earth has happened? Why are we at Malaysia? We've changed circuit completely. Yes, we were in the middle of uh, Australia. But I thought, you know what? We've done Australia already. Didn't want to have it too samey-samey. So let's go and skip ahead to round number two and try a different circuit. And a circuit that was not even on the F1 calendar anymore. And we've had a stonking start here. Up into P18. This time I haven't killed half the grid. And, uh, well, we've got Ricardo back in the Toro Rosso. There really is a throwback here. Oh, he's he's actually uh, defending to the inside quite aggressively there. We've got, oh, bit of contact from the AI. Raikkonen's lost his front wing there. That was some AI on AI contact. I don't remember the AI being that erratic against each other, but it's happened. We're sending around the outside of Schumacher in the, in the Mercedes. Round the outside of Grosjean as well. Ooh, don't take me out, Grosjean. This was his bad year in Lotus. 
But we've done it. Up into P11 once again. You know, I'm just a driving machine. I'm just a dri- let's, let's ignore the fact that the difficulty is probably quite that low. I'm just a driving machine, really, on these old games. Grosjean, go. Going for an attack. Will he make a move? No, he won't. Ooh, he might actually. No, no, he backed off. He backed off. Duresta, these days, he's not quite in the commentary booth yet. Boring us to death on Sky F1 commentary. He's still racing about... Probably boring his team to death on the team radio, let's be honest. But uh, let's try and get him if we can. Gonna send it. Come on, nice and easy. It's a draw. Oh, it's a tricky corner on F1. We've not worked. Uh, we've gone for a spin. What is it with me and old games and spinning? Just happens a lot, doesn't it? Oh, at least we're back with the cucumber then in his natural habitat, Malaysia. This was the this was the the famous track where the cucumber nickname came from. So it's quite fitting, to be honest. Right, send it to the inside. Oh my God, I sent to the inside. My, my car has uh, sent some confetti there on the front of it. Was it celebrating the overtake? The, the car literally just went oh my god, we're going to make an overtake. Confetti! We, we need to celebrate. Alright, about three AI combusted there. That's good. So uh, they're in the gravel trap. That's good to see. Up into P15. The hand... Who knew, you know, they give us charity in the Road to Glory series with Williams. Looks like we're back on the F1 2012 game with Marussia, the original Road to Glory car. And they uh, keep giving us charity on this game as well. It's just a common theme, really. We're catching Schumacher. If I can get Schumacher here for P10, I can call it a successful race. And I don't think we need to see any more here at Malaysia, to be honest. Uh, we're going to have DRS surely on this next straight. So we should be able to make a pass into turn one, maybe. Closing up in the last corner. Oh, my God. Right, set this up. Cut back in tighter. DRS will be activated. Here we go. Build the speed. Rich mix going here. Here we go. Pit stop time. It really is the perfect time to end off. He squeezes us towards the wall as he would do being Schumacher. But we're up into P10. And there's a car off there on the left. Up into P9. It really is the time to call it a day. Call it quits. Red flag the race now. Ladies and gents, Marussia up in the points. Two points to be exact. It's a good day in the office. Oh no, I've had a gearbox issue. Oh no. Sad day, sad day in the office. We're so far, yet so close. <laughs> oh, the disappointed animation. I saw this a fair few times in Korea, but I can't lie, but my engineer will get me through it. But get these camera people out of the way, yeah? Yeah, yeah, listen here, mate. Get him out of the way, yeah, son? And <laughs> What's his face? <laughs> it's a that is not, that is a... Uh, how have the graphics got worse? 2011 Crofty was better than that guy. What's happened to his face? He's been acid attacked. And on that brilliant note, I think we're going to end it off here, here. That's been a little trip down memory lane of F1 2012. Actually, I can't lie, to be honest, guys. F1 2012 career mode was a lot more bare bones than I actually remember it. It was because... It was, it was, I think, because it was my first, like I said, my first F1 game that I really started uploading a lot on YouTube. I have so many more fond, nostalgic memories of it, but when you really boil it down, it was actually a very bare-bones career with the removal of all the paddock stuff and the interview stuff. And it'll probably be the same thing with 2013, but obviously I'll, we'll leave it till then to see what 2013 is like. But if you have enjoyed this trip down memory lane for F1 2012, then guys, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, do subscribe for weekly, fallen content. I've been Araba. I'm just a day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.